Hey friends, this is Tig in with another reaction video. And today we're going to be doing a reaction on Megalopolis, this official first look clip. It's starring Adam Driver and Francis Ford Coppola, I'm assuming is the director. Now, I don't know what this is. I was about to skip over it first. I do like Adam Driver, but I was about to skip over it because I was like, you know, maybe it's some kind of dry boring drama or something like that, right? Because I've been coming across a lot of those lately. But you know, I decided to go ahead and stop when I saw Francis Ford Coppola involved because he's very, very good at what he does. And I believe he is the one that did The Godfather. So he's really, really good at his job and the kind of uh, dramas that he bring forth. So it's not some kind of basic drama out there. So I just, I just want to go ahead and come in with this with fresh eyes. I don't know what it is. Never seen it before. Uh, and I, I, I was looking for all kind of videos. I think I might have seen it, you know, on the screen, but I just went over it and then went to something else. So I decided today to go ahead and take a look at it and see what it is. So hopefully it's something interesting, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, please like, subscribe, and share this video. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you know whenever we come out with new videos, okay? All right, let's get started. I know exactly how it's feel. That's how I feel with heights, man. I am terrified. Why is he doing this? It's crazy. I guess he wanted to self-delete or something like that. I'm guessing this is what this is about. Beautiful though, boy. Is that the last sight you're gonna see? This is interesting. Oh no, man. This is something else. Oh man. That really got my attention, man. This is like a sci-fi or something. Very interesting. I never ever heard of Francis Ford Coppola ever doing a sci-fi type movie. Most of the stuff is drama and it's really deep stuff, really deep stuff. He, I, I really respect him as a filmmaker. He's really, really good at what he does. But I never ever heard of him doing a, a, uh, a sci-fi. Now, you hear people like him, might they might be like producers or executive producers or producers or something that has nothing to do with what they direct but i believe that he's actually directing this movie which i've never heard of him doing anything like this so if you have please leave it in the comments please let me know but i decided to go ahead and pull up this vanity fair article to find out a little bit more about this because i am fascinated very fascinated so let's go ahead and get into this all right Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis, an exclusive first look at the director's retro futuristic epic, starring Adam Driver and Natalie Emmanuel, scanned the horizon and Coppola explained his sprawling influences for utopia drama. Now I like her, I like Natalie, oh, beautiful woman. Oh, look at that, that skyline, man, that looks good, man. I'm gonna have to use this as a thumbnail, most definitely. 
Oh, most definitely. That looks beautiful. What is this? All right, let's find out what's going on with this thing. Mega Megalopolis has been taking shape inside uh, Francis Fort Coppola mine for nearly half of his life. And now, see, fi now he's finally ready to show it to the world. The 85 year old director of the Godfather Apocalypse Now and the uh, Conversation has finally completed his op operatic uh, passion project at considerable personal cost. It will debut next month at the Cannes Film Festival, um, hopping, hoping to uh, attract a uh, global distribution willing to take a similar chance. All right, so I guess he's um, putting everything on the line, man. I mean, he's 85 years old, man. So why not start doing something you like, right? I mean, because I, I like to think that a lot of directors or people that create a lot of this uh, this work, you know, they're very fascinated and want to get into something. But it takes a lot for you to just put something out that you think you're the only one that might like it and nobody else might not like it and put your money where your mouth is. That's a big risk when it comes to Hollywood because these movies aren't cheap at all and it can mess up your reputation if you have a great reputation he has a great reputation so this is very very interesting man very interesting so i wonder if he's just trying to do something just unique that nobody ever seen before i mean you know like when the matrix first came out nobody ever seen that stuff it was like the best work that you know that transformed movies the way they made after that movie was done so i'm wondering if this is going to be something similar to that that's going to be just new because it's coming straight from this guy's mind man he just been involved in it uh for a while but never took the chance on um taking a risk and you never think of these high profile directors not taking risks because you would think after a certain period of time people might trust them so they can just go ahead and do whatever they want but i guess that's not the case and you really need approval from uh corporations and studios in order to you know do something or you could lose a lot of money but again he's 85 years old maybe he's at a point now he just don't care he's rich what do, what do he really got to lose except his reputation of course but i mean but really over one movie really it could be a, a pile of crap who knows right because nobody's perfect everybody can always put out a pile of crap at one time or another but i think it's going to be very very interesting and adam driver isn't exactly perfect for his choices of movies okay because most of the movies i've seen of adam driver they're not that good now he does well in them he is a good actor but i'm just saying that the choices it's sort of like mel gibson mel gibson put out some good movies but there's a lot of mel gibson movies i didn't care for right but i like mel gibson i thought i think he's a great actor he always do well in the movie but that doesn't mean the story is going to be good or interesting but uh it's the same with adam driver with me he's a good actor i like to see him in movies but that doesn't mean he picks the best movies all right, but this is really interesting. The movie is about personal, political, okay, political, and romantic clashes that arise during a battle to construct an American utopia. And it was shaped in part by the speculative uh, prophecy of H.G. Wells. Okay, all right, that's interesting. A murderous conspiracy from ancient Roman history and devastation of the September 11 attacks and the um, outsized influence of attractive cable news hosts among a litany of other inspirations. To that, I added everything I had ever read or learned about, Coppola says in a statement. That's interesting. I'm a little weary when he's talking about political. I wouldn't have been that way in the past because, you know, back then when I was growing up, movies didn't really dive so deeply into it. Or they did and you just didn't really notice it because it wasn't in the mainstream media 24 hours a day like it is now, you know, and all over social media. But then again, maybe I, it was just me. Maybe I just didn't pay attention. All right. But it still sounds fascinating, though. Uh, Vanity Fair has an exclusive look at the results. Adam Driver as the idealistic architect and artist planning to rebuild a city that has fallen to ruins. And Natalie Emmanuel as the socialite daughter of his nemesis, a corrupt mayor, I'm not even going to try to say his name, who likes his multiple kingdoms the way it is. In his official long, uh, law line for the film, Coppola describes Driver's character as having the power to stop time, while Emmanuel's character is caught between the two. Uh, um, deeply in love with the artist, uh, but loyal to her, to her hard-charging father, forcing her to discover what she truly believes hum humanity deserves. 
crazy stuff crazy stuff crazy stuff interesting so even though it's going to be a sci-fi it's probably going to be more psychological and really really thought-provoking type movie it's not going to be like really really uh like everybody you know running through you know jumping from building to building and maintenance and i got it done right so i i don't expect it's going to have a lot of um science fiction special effects and all this kind of stuff in it uh, I think it's going to be a more of a thought-provoking type movie. It's going to delve into a lot of things that's probably going on right now. Maybe he just felt like it's the perfect time. But then again, maybe he felt like he's running out of time and he just want to put this out. But um, I'm hoping when he when he mentioned that he wanted to be political, I'm hoping that he's not going to dive too deep on, on one side. I love it when uh, you take a movie and if you do it politically right, you, you, you look at both sides and let the audience decide which side they want to take. I hate it when they just do one side and try to make the other side look like they're stupid. You know what I mean? And that's insulting. And sometimes I think they want to be insulting, you know, because they don't like the way you think. So let me just go on, on an interview or make a movie that just insult the other side. Like the other side don't know what they think and what they want or what they're thinking about or how they want to see the, how they see the world. So it's crazy. So any political movie like that to me is disingenuous. I don't think it's good in general. I think you should show both parts and be honest about both, both parts too. Don't just make it seem like one side is right, one side is wrong. You just put the information out there and let the people decide. But these days, it's not like that. They don't really want people to have their own opinions about things, which is crazy, right? And now sometimes they include this in movies, which I think is a crazy thing. And people lose money over that. Hopefully he won't do that himself. The sprawling um, ensemble also includes Aubrey Plaza, Shia LaBeouf, okay, Dustin Hoffman, uh, John Voight. Okay, that's a bunch of people. Not all of them are um, on the left, not all of them on the right. Lawrence Fishburne, who was a teenager soldier in Apocalypse Now. Catherine Hunter, singer Grace Vanderwall, and James Ramar, as well as the filmmaker's sister, the Godfather's actor, Telia Sher, and her son, Coppola's nephew, Jason Swartzman. Okay, that's, a, that's some talented people in this, man, right? Very talented. And I'm glad to see Shia LaBeouf getting movies, man. He just became a Catholic recently. So he's now a Christian from my understanding. And uh, John Volt is a conservative. And this is the thing. John Volt says a lot of things uh, that's very conservative. And he really disagrees with his daughter a lot. If I'm thinking about the same John Volt, if this is the same guy. But I noticed that he don't really get a lot of pushback, which is interesting, right? Because normally if you're in Hollywood, they say if you are really conservative, they don't want to give you a job. They kind of slander you and all kind of stuff. But they never really, really go after John Voight. You know what I'm saying? They might say some disparaging things about him, but they never really go, out, go, go after him. Or I never really see him suffering as far as his career goes. He still get jobs. An early industry screening for studio executives result in anonymous leaked reactions that range from impressions to perplexed. Uh, for some moviegoers, this only increases curiosity about the project. Yeah, I'm one of those people, right? Enth enthusiastic social media reaction soars in recent weeks as fans express even more interest in seeing their uh, veteran take a wild chance. So this is outside his comfort zone. So, you know, it, it seems like once people know that you do a certain thing, you got to keep doing it. But after a while, I, I can imagine that can get boring or if you got like, you know, that's what I like about H.G. Wells. I don't know if you love his movies or hate his movies or you're in between or whatever. He was very creative. And he also was a, um, a first timer when it came down to the way films are made. And he was really good, especially with his books and the interviews that he's done. Very creative, man. Very creative. They, matter of fact, when I went to photography school, they talked a lot about the way he made films. And I found it very fascinating because we go really into de details. It's also the same thing with paintings. There's a lot involved in paintings that I never knew before I went to the school, right? That's what I like about school. I mean, whether I, th whether I think it's a waste of money or not, you know, that's an argument that can be had at another time. But either way, I did learn some things about it, a lot of things about it. And they definitely talk about um, um, Orson Welles, which is a great filmmaker, a great filmmaker. Uh, Coppola declined to be interviewed for this exclusive first look. His wife of 61 years, Eleanor, passed away earlier this month, and the director and his family remained in mourning. 
Instead, he offered veteran, um, vet, vet, Vanity Fair a written statement about the origins of the film. Coppola traces the, or, the origin of the new uh, movie back to his childhood in New York when he was fascinated with tales of scientists and researchers and tinkered with uh, amusingly dangerous experim experimentation kits. Movies, of course, provided another outlet for his imagination. One film that struck in his mind was a 1936 drama about a society that desperately attempted to halt its own collapse, made by pioneering producer Alexander Korda and written by the uh, War of the World and the Time Machine author H.G. Wells. Yeah, I mean, people still going back and making his movies, man. I mean, this guy was really good at what he's done. He had a, for an old man, an old man, he had a real good imagination. I mean, you would think, because people, people like to say this. You still looking at the X-Men 97? Uh, you still looking on you know, playing games, video games, and all that kind of stuff at your age? You know, they say that a lot to older people. You know, older men that's criticizing Star Wars and all that kind of stuff. They were like, maybe you should grow up or whatever, right? But you don't really lose your imagination when you get older. You still have it. It's still there, you know? Especially if you like science fiction. It's still there. People just expect you to stop liking things because you get to an age where you need to grow up. You got responsibilities. You can do both. I mean, don't get me wrong, man. When women love these fantasy movies when they're young, right? It don't stop when they get older. I, I hear a 40, 50 year old woman still go to romantic movies. Still the same. You know, Disney movies and all that kind of stuff, right? And it's the same for men. You know, Star Wars is like, you know, it, it is Disney, but you know what I mean by that, right? But I'm just saying that, you know, even though H.G. Wells was old, an older man, he still had his imagination still with him. And people just expect you just not, not to have one because you get older. But you do. You do still have your imagination going. That's why I love the X-Men. That's why I love a lot of stuff, man, that you I did love when I was younger. And I still love it now. I mean, I still got to, you know, I still got to pay bills. I still got to do my taxes. I, get, I still got to do all these things, right? Build relationships, everything else, work. But that doesn't mean I can't enjoy what I always enjoy. And when people tell you to grow up and stop doing these things, right? You know, you, you like what you like and I'll like what I like. As long as I'm not hurting anybody, as long as I'm taking care of all my responsibilities, I still should be able to enjoy these things. It doesn't make me a kid. I understand that. I'm, I understand the realities of the world. But once in a while, we like to lose ourselves in fantasy. You know, and like I say, a lot of creative people and these are, and we talk about people in history that did sculptures and paintings and what have you, and movies. They were older people. They had imaginations. They wanted to live that way. That was the way, they way of life. And nobody told them they need to grow up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they were making tons and tons of money, okay? And, you know, a lot of people honored these, you know, honored these people, okay? So, you know, so whenever somebody ever tell you you need to grow up or whatever, right? They don't understand. They just don't understand. They they taking life so seriously that they can't even enjoy it. You know what I mean? So let's continue. The seeds of Megalopolis, if I'm saying that right, were planted um, when, as a kid, I saw H.G. Wells' Things to Come, Coppola says. Uh, this 1930s uh, quarter classic is about building the world of tomorrow and has always been with me first as the boy scientist I was and later as a filmmaker you know even the greatest directors now man can remember going back and looking at other directors and producers and creators as inspiration for the things that they do now you know you know I know everybody put their own spin on it depending on when they grow up or how far their imagination goes but everything is always copied at some levels from other people or at least inspired from other people. So I think that's great that he has um, um, his um, hero, which is H.G. Wells. In a statement to Vanity Fair, the director also addresses rumors about the long gestation of Megalopolis. To maintain total control of the project, he sold part of his winery estate in Northern California to self-finance the 120 million budget. Woo. Like I say, he's 80, he's 85 years old now. He probably don't care anymore. He lost his life. He's coming to the end of his um, life and career. So he probably want to go out the way he wants to go out. So all that other stuff mean nothing to him now. So he just got rid of it. And I give him, I, I give him um, props for that big time. You know, not too many people going to take that chance. You know, but he believes in this project so much. 
that he decided to go ahead and do this. So I give the man props big time for this. You know, it's a big risk, man. But, you know, I think he can spare the money. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if it's a hit, we talk about George Lucas type money, right? I don't know how rich um, Coppola is, man, but we talking George Lucas. Because George Lucas, if you watch behind the scenes of the first Star Wars, he, he put a lot into that movie. A lot. I don't believe he was rich at the time, but he put a lot of time and effort and bargain a lot. He, if that would have crashed, it would have probably been the end of him. Okay, that's the kind of risk. But I don't believe Coppola is at that point where this will destroy him, regardless. But he believes in this project so much. And Adam Driver, Adam Driver, got to be honored to be in this tip, including uh, Emmanuel. She got to be really honored to be in this. Okay, especially as a black woman. You know, I, I, I did on a lot of videos, and I think I did it on. Uh, love bites when I said that they that's a band that don't complain they just do the job and I believe Emmanuel is also one of those people to just do their job to show I might heard her say some stupid stuff too you know what I mean but she is getting the opportunity probably of a lifetime right now and I'm sure she's grateful for it because it'd be crazy if she started complaining and and really you know I doubt if she ever gonna do any interviews that she's gonna complain constantly and mess this up this is a big time opportunity here. I don't care how this movie turns out. This is a big time opportunity for her. You know what I mean? And her, if her performance is great, doesn't matter if the movie bombs, if somebody see that she can do a great job at something like this, it will help her out big time. And black women as well, right? And I just saw an article about, about a lot of black people going to the um, Kentucky Derby and stuff like that. They would dress very nicely and stuff like that. And then you hear... Um, Beyonce, you know, doing country music. I'm wondering if there's a change going on that I don't know about. I'm going to have to look into that, right? So I'm like, what's going on now? It used to be just about hip hop and they going to bars and clubs and all that kind of... What's the change now? Why Why is everything seem to be coming different? Now, I'm not complaining. This is the kind of stuff I wish black people did. I don't mind you doing the hip hop and all this other stuff, right? But also there's other sides to black people too, which I think is great. And that's why I'm glad that she has this opportunity to do this movie and hopefully do something different. And she, and she never did, in my opinion, the typical black movie, you know, per se, but she, uh, uh, this is a chance. I'm hoping more black people w with talent now, not just given to them just because they black, but with talent, get these types of opportunities to shine instead of doing the same old complaining. What that movie that came out, you know, uh, the magical magical Negro or something stuff like that. It's uh, uh, and I didn't even see the movie. I know it's off. Okay, let's continue. I wasn't really working on the screenplay, the screenplay for forty years, as I often see written, but rather I was uh, collecting notes and uh, clipping for a scrapbook of things I found interesting for some future screenplays or examples of political cartoons or different historical subjects. Couple says. You know, I find this interesting and fascinating. People think, you know, people come up with concepts in months. But I heard a lot of uh, directors or producers, they be like liking something for years, a book they read or some kind of concept they come up with for years. I mean, years, almost like this, in this situation, almost like a lifetime. And then finally the movie get made. So not all movies are made based on, you know, oh, I read this one book, let's make a movie. Or I got this idea, let's make a movie after a certain amount of months. Sometimes it takes years to get these movies done. And maybe he couldn't get it done. Even with his name, he couldn't get it done by anybody else. And plus he said he won't full control. So I'm not going to assume that nobody wanted to make this movie. So he, he probably just wanted full control of it, which I think is great. And I don't care if he fails at it, man. But as long as he made the effort and put the hard work into it, I just got to give him props for that. Ultimately, after a lot of time, I settled on the idea of a Roman epic. And then later, a Roman epic set in modern America. Well, I like that. So I really only enjoy writing this script on and off in the last uh, dozen years or so. Also, as I made, also as, also as I have made many films of many different subjects and many different styles, I hope for a project later in my life when I might better understand what my personal style is. I mean, that's what I love about being creative. That's why I love photography, videography, movies behind the scenes because it is never ending learning you're always learning that's what my um 
photography teacher tell told us he's like you always growing and you're always learning you think you got it but you really don't and, you, and that's why you should watch other people watch other, pe other people's work look behind the scenes of how they do things it'll improve your work and you'll grow but you it's never ending you could die and, liter and literally never stop learning mm. period and that's what i love about it because i always worked a job where it was stagnant you did the same thing over and over again. If you had a nine to five job, you know what I'm talking about. Now there are jobs out there that that's pretty interesting. That's not the same old, same old, but most of the jobs I've done, it was the same old stuff over and over and over again. And the only thing that got me through it was my create, my creative outlet. That's what really got me through it. So now that I'm, I have a little bit more free time on my hands and freedom. Um, that I'm not really trapped, that I have to be bogged down by a nine to five at this moment, because everything can change, who knows, right? But at this moment, I'm not really bogged down. I can really start, you know, looking into more creative stuff. I'm a lot more happier. You know, I'm less stressed. I feel my mind is working like it should. And I think creative is important because people, I think liberals and conservatives balance each other out. I don't think one is better than the other. I think that we need that balance on both ends. And I think things are off right now. You know, I think that liberals think that just straight up being liberal is a good thing, but I think they learn it now is not. You need some conservatism. You need some people, some straight men. It's like comedy. Like you see a comedy movie, there's always the, the funny guy and the straight guy. Balance things out and makes it great. Right, right now, Deadpool is coming out right now. It's like you got Deadpool and you got Logan. And that balanced everything out. And I think it's perfect. And that's what I uh, like about, um, I'm, 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 I'm considered conservative, but I'm also a, a, a creative type mind. I like that. And it's very interesting to me, right? I know not to go too far with it. You know, some people just go too far, right? I'm not going too far with it. I, I, I like to step over the line here and there, but I don't want to go too far. I've taken some risks with stuff. Some things were successful. Some things was a tragic loss, <laughs> but either way, I enjoyed the journey. And that what makes to me, that's what's so great about being um, a part of Hollywood when Hollywood ain't in politics and all the other crazy stuff they're doing. But I think it's fantastic. Since Megalopolis was the, um, uh, distillation that's distillation of the of, of that lifetime he decided to brand the title with his own name for the first time always respecting the original writer and the films i made and always insisting that their names appear above the title such as it was with amario putzo's godfather and bram stoker's dracula he says it was only with the uh the rain people and the conversation that would have been permitted to have my own name as an original writer on it. But when I was too insecure to present myself in such grandiosity, grandiosity, I like that. You know, even, you know, even the best of the best can have their insecurities. And I thought it was just people just starting out. I thought, you know, if I learn enough about photography, if I learn enough about, um, videography, making movies or what have you, right. Or, or, or this, you know, doing YouTube, whatever. At some point, I'm just going to be straight up comfortable. But then I think it's going to be boring at that point. I think the excitement is to always have a little bit of nervousness. Now, for example, I'm going to give you a perfect example, like for photography, for example. Let's you setting up a shoot, models, you got like hairdressers, um, you got makeup artists, you got other people on set, whatever, helping, helping you with the light, you know, transporting, um, uh, your equipment or what have you, right? Everybody look to you to make sure everything is going smooth. People can disagree, but you got to make the final decision because you got everybody together. You, you found the location, who you might pay, who you might not pay, or whatever the situation is. Is it a trade shoot, whatever? But you get nervous because you know things are going to go wrong. It always is almost always go wrong. Something always something goes wrong with the camera. Something goes wrong. It, the weather all of a sudden change on you, it's like really windy. Um, then you go to a location thinking everything okay. I remember I went to a location and then somebody called the cops on me and said, nah, you're on private property. Y'all gotta go somewhere else. So we had to move and find another spot at that moment. I mean, all kind of stuff went wrong, right? But when I think about it now, it was just fun. It was just fun. I mean, if everything went 
the way you expect it to, that'd be really boring, man. I mean, it's, it's nice if you're working for somebody else and you, you get paid and you want to make sure everything go right. But you learn when things go wrong because the next time it goes wrong again, you have a solution then. So you learn. And the fact that he says that he, you know, he had some insecurities during his career is is, is good for people like me because I'm, I'm not even cl close to his his um, expertise. But still, just to hear that, I think that's great. Early on, I, rem I remember once I took 130 blank pages and put on a title page boldly announcing Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis and under that all roads leads to Rome. I pretended it wasn't totally blank. I uh, uh, weighing in, weighing in, it in uh, my hand so I could uh, imagine what one day it would feel like and believe one day it could exist. Okay, so this this is a big deal to him. Then later, once I had a draft, I must have rewritten it 300 times, hoping each rewrite would improve it. It only a half percent better. Man, he really put a lot into this, man. He put a lot into this. I mean, like, yeah, it's, it's it has to be, um, this is his baby. You know, when, when you hear um, George Lucas talking about Star Wars as his baby, and it's unfortunately he sold it to Disney because they ruining it right now. But this is his baby right here. And I think this means more to him than probably any other movie he made. Because, I mean, when you think about it, his hero is H.G. Uh, Wells. This guy was seriously creative even in that time and even now to film goers and filmmakers, people that take film seriously. This guy, this was his own thing. Everything he done, he took risk with it. If you look at, like I said, I learned a lot of this stuff when I was in um, uh, a photography school, right? But we talked about films and all that. And they talked a lot about H.G. Wells. They talked a lot about, uh, what's that, uh, Blade Runner, you know, the lighting and all that other stuff. They talked a lot about a lot of things. And H.G. Wells took risks that nobody else took. And that's why he's so popular. He, they, they, they show his stuff in colleges these days. So this guy's really, really, really good at what he did. Really, really good at what he did. And it was all on him. And I think uh, um, Coppola want this this movie to be that. That one day people are gonna look back at it and talk about it in colleges, all the things that he do. Because it's so in depth. I'm gonna give you um, another example though. When I'm watching um, X-Men 97. Now you wouldn't think about it when you're watching a cartoon. When I was young and I was watching cartoons, I never really thought about the deepness of of it right I, I would say stuff like that's a good story or that's some good action whatever that was that was pretty much the depth of everything when i watched these now i'm watching them i watch it with a new different eye i remember watching um 12 monkeys of uh, the army of the 12 monkeys with bruce willis great movie i recommend it definitely watch that movie if you have not seen it and he said, um, there was in a, in a in movie theater, and he mentioned that, you know how you look at a movie when you were young, and then you see it differently as you get older, and you wonder if the movie changed, or was it you that changed? And now that I look at things differently, now that I have done things in this genre, I look at it differently. I look at the music. I look at the um, the way that they have that the, the characters act, and the way they say things, the voice actors, all these things. I see it all. And that's why I find behind the scenes so fascinating. So you just look at things differently and you can examine them more. So people, if this becomes a success, people, even if it don't become a success, just from the look of it and maybe the score of it just might be something that they might have in colleges that they talk about. If they improve the colleges these days, because right now the colleges are going through a lot of crap right now. But if things go back to normal as normal is considered, um, if they decide to ever talk about this movie, it's, it'll be a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Even the Blade Runner wasn't famous at the time it came out, but they talked about it from the lighting, and the story, and all of that. It was just, it was just fantastic stuff, man. I loved it, man. That was the one part of going to college that I wish never ended. I love being around people talking about movies and things of that sort. I think it's great. And I love the details. And I mentioned X-Men 97. I love the details that they put into this show. I think it's fantastic. Fantastic. What well, the last one I was just watching with uh, Nightcrawler 
and they hear some kind of classical music playing in the background when he was using his swords and stuff man i thought that was so fantastic and you can tell that they got really detailed about the stuff that they put together it wasn't just writing or, 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 or art it wasn't just that it was it was detailed on everything they did on the show that makes it so fantastic it, it like i said almost like a movie and they didn't neglect it because it was a cartoon they neglected it. they put real detail into this you know it was people that understood what they were doing the mechanics of making movies you know this know this that's why x-men 97 is so good and hopefully they won't screw around with it right now we got a better fat um, better um understanding what this movie might be about i still need more information i'm still not exactly sure where this is going but i would definitely like to see a trailer i haven't seen if, if a trailer already came out i didn't see it i didn't even know about this movie okay i definitely didn't see it but i would definitely like to see a trailer i'm not going to go back and look for another trailer this one was good enough for me right now a teaser so hopefully they'll come out with a more depth trailer so we can understand what is going what's going on with this movie but it looks great it looks amazing i love lighting i love filters i love all that i love landscapes all of that stuff this is so fascinating to me and i'm definitely going to check it out more okay all right i really appreciate all of you coming by thanks again this is t and peace